Ottoman Empire. It seems clear that Pericles had in mind to create a city whose greatness would be admired by the people who lived there, by everybody else in the Greek world, well into the future. Heracles announced a glorious new vision to the Athenian assembly. All kinds of enterprises should be created which will provide inspiration for every art, find employment for every hand. We must devote ourselves to acquiring things that will be the source of everlasting fame. Heracles turned his attention to the Acropolis the sheer peak in the center of Athens, home of the city's patron goddess, Athena. Twenty years earlier, the Persians had burnt down the temples that stood here. Ever since, the Athenians had left these ruins untouched as a memorial to those killed in the war. But Pericles had other ideas. He proposed a massive reconstruction plan. At its center would be a new Parthenon, a temple to Athena. And it would be one of the most astonishing buildings of the ancient world. This new construction program was of unprecedented magnitude and expense. The Parthenon in particular was extraordinarily expensive. It was filled with all sorts of architectural refinements. Heracles planned to spend over 5,000 talents in the first year alone. A total budget of more than a billion dollars in today's terms. This project would require 20,000 tons of marble. The Athenian quarries at Mount Pentelicus, just outside the city, resounded as hundreds of workmen traced out and carved great blocks of marble from the mountain. This temple would be decorated like none before. Sculptors and craftsmen were gathered from all over the Greek world. With them stood Pericles, for he treated the building of the Parthenon as his own personal project. He selected architects, he selected the men who designed the plans. Pericles was directly involved in the planning process. Some protested that he was decking out the city like a prostitute. But when the building was completed in only 15 years, his critics were silenced. The Parthenon was and still is the most glorious symbol of Athens' empire. Here was the spiritual heart of the city, the mark of her wealth, power, and artistic genius. When you first came through the door, you'd have been just stunned. You'd have been confronted immediately by an enormous 40-foot high statue of Athena in gold and ivory and studded with jewels. I think the, the impression of a statue of that size and with that kind of dressing must have truly overwhelming.
Pericles had embellished his temple like no other. Though this astonishing statue has since been lost to history, other treasures from the Parthenon have survived for over 2,000 years. The most famous is the Parthenon Frieze, a 500-foot-long stretch of carved marble which ran around the inner wall of the temple. The Parthenon frieze is only two and a half inches thick at its maximum depth. And yet, in this space, the sculptors carved rank upon rank of crowded figures, a great procession of Athenians, glorious and elegant. Here, Pericles offered his fellow citizens a vision of themselves and their democratic state at the height of their glory. Democracy itself becomes heroized in that monument. It's a very democratic thing that wants to include all those citizens who participated in beating off the first great threat to democracy, which was from the Persians. These are ideals to which you can aspire. The monuments that Pericles built for his fellow Athenians still stand on the peak of the Acropolis. They remain the most striking legacy of classical Athens, an enduring testament to the achievements of the world's first democracy. But Pericles was not simply concerned with astonishing construction projects. Under his leadership, Athens would also become the intellectual center of the ancient world. Pericles was remarkable in that he associated with the leading minds of his day in just about every field of endeavor. In these years, Pericles played host to an astonishing generation of individuals. Figures such as Anaxagoras, the first man to realize that the moon was lit by reflected sunlight. He knew Herodotus, the world's first historian, who wrote one of the earliest records of Greek life. And poets and authors such as Aeschylus and Euripides, whose works are still standards of world literature. Pericles was well aware of his city stature. Our whole city is an education for our citizens excel all men in versatility, resourcefulness, and brilliance. Even Pericles' partner, a woman named Aspasia, was unique and distinguished. Pericles had divorced his wife and set up home with a foreign woman, a woman whose occupation was hardly to be expected. For Aspasia was what was known as a hetaira, Greek for a companion. Yes, she was, in a technical sense, I guess, a prostitute, but she was more than that, a woman of charm, of style, of intellect. She really was very extraordinary. She had an extraordinary...